Many of you young people here have heard the song on last year's Edge of the Century album by Styx. Here are the lyrics, listen. Every night I say a prayer in the hopes that there's a heaven, but every day I'm more confused how the saints turn into sinners. All the heroes and legends I knew as a child have fallen as idols of clay, and I feel this empty place inside, so afraid that I've lost my faith. Show me the way, show me the way. Bring me tonight to the mountain and take my confusion away and show me the way. And if I see a light, should I believe? Tell me how I will know. Show me the way, show me the way. Take me tonight to the river and wash my illusions away. Show me the way, show me the way. Give me the strength and the courage to believe that I'll get there someday and please show me the way. And every night I say a prayer in the hopes that there's a heaven. And this passage says, for God, for God. Do you believe in God? Yes. I can't prove God. I can't take you to a scientific laboratory and prove to you that there is a God. But the Bible teaches us about Him. He is the Creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All those stars at night that you see, if you can see them in New York, God created them and started them. He is also a spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He doesn't have a body like you and I. He could only be one place at one time if he had a body like yours. But God is a spirit. He can be everywhere at the same time. He can be in Russia. He can be in China. He can be in America. He can be in Africa. He can be in Latin America. He can be everywhere at the same time. God is also unchanging. I am the Lord God. I change not, says the Bible. In him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, says James. The Bible teaches that God is a holy God, absolutely holy. He cannot even look upon sin. The Bible also tells us that he's a God of judgment. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Think of it, every secret thing you ever did, all your secret thoughts, things that you thought nobody knew about are someday going to be brought into the open and you're going to be judged. The Bible says that God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. Think of it, he's appointed a day, a moment, in which he's going to judge the world and you'll be there. God, but God also is a God of love. My mother loved me, but she didn't love me near as much as God loves me. And that seems impossible to believe. My wife loves me. I love her. I have five children. I love them. I have 19 grandchildren. I love them and I hope they love me. I have three great grandchildren. I think they love me and I love them and I know that they all love the Lord, but nothing is to be compared to the love of God. They had to invent a whole new word in the Greek language to tell us something about the love of God. God is a God of love. He loves you. And if there's one thing I want you to take from this great park when you leave here today, it's this. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And God is interested in you. And he has the hairs of your head numbered. He sees the sparrow fall. He knows all about you and he loves you. No matter how many sins you've committed or whatever you've done, you may have gone as low as Nicky Cruz described a moment ago his life was, but God loves you. And if God could change Nicky Cruz and change Johnny Cash, God can change you if you will let him. And he can do it today, beginning right now.